Hello everyone, this is Dr. Archana Reti. I'm a gynecologist from Ankara Hospital, LB Nagar branch. Today I'm going to give a talk regarding the premature delivery. Pregnancy usually consists of 40 weeks of duration. So whenever a baby is delivered before 37 weeks of pregnancy, it is called as premature delivery. Nowadays, we are seeing a very much increased trend in premature delivery. And whenever a baby is delivered before 28 weeks, it is called as an extremely premature baby. And if it is more than 34 to 36 weeks if the baby is delivered, it is called as late preterm delivery which is the most common premature delivery we see in nowadays in developing countries almost more than 15 percent of patients are landing up in a premature delivery why is there such an increasing trend as we are seeing this is mainly because of the increasing risk factors like maternal age if the patient is below 17 years that's a teenage pregnancy or if there is an advanced maternal age more than 35 years of age and also there is now nowadays increasing trend in the infertility patients which leads to IVF pregnancies, like they may land up in twins or a triplet pregnancies. And if there is an increased level of amniotic fluid level, which is called as polyhydramnios, and if there is a persistent or recurrent urinary tract infections or a respiratory tract infections, if there is anemia, and if the patient is underweight or there is no much weight gain during her pregnancy, and if the patient is having anemia or if there is short cervix is there, in which we detected during the antenatal care. Or in some cases, there might be induced delivery because of risk factors involved during pregnancy, that is medical complications complicating pregnancy, like uncontrolled diabetes, hypertension, any placental risk factors, or if there is no sufficient growth during the pregnancy, that is called as IUGR baby, or if there is abnormal Doppler findings which are detected during the antenatal care. Premature delivery, it can be either a spontaneous or induced one. The induced preterm delivery is the one any medical complications are arising during the pregnancy. For that reason, in view of the beneficial effect to the mother and both the fetus, we deliver them prematurely. That is usually we do between more than 34 to 36 weeks unless other contraindications are there. Spontaneous premature delivery where the patient has herself set into a preterm labor. So what are the usually the signs and symptoms we see? In pregnancy, every antenatal patient usually have some mild to moderate contractions that is abdominal tightening are observed. These are the contractions which we see a mild to abrupt, which lasts only for a few seconds and it might occur in once or two to three hours. But when these contractions are increasing trend, that is it lasts for more than 30 seconds and it is occurring very frequently, that is every 10 minutes or 20 minutes and that is the warning sign to show you to the doctor and if there is any low constant dull backache is seen or if there is any pel pel pelvic pressure is increased in which we have the urge to pass through or increased frequency of maturation is seen and if there is any vaginal discharge or a bleeding or a watery leak from the vagina is there these are the signs and symptoms which when you, when you are observing that is a symptom to show it to the doctor once you approach your gynecologist there will be a per abdomen and a per vaginal examination is done which will help you to assess whether you are in a threatened preterm labor or an advanced preterm labor. Threatened preterm labor is like when you are having the contractions but there are no dilatation in the cervix and there are no other risk factors. In such situations, if there are no other comorbidities there, we try to avoid uh, preterm labor, subside it and as far as we can prolong the pregnancy. In such situations, immediate ad admission is required. Patient has been advised complete bed rest is there and if the patient is a working woman, the working conditions are to be changed, her stress levels has to be in reduced, coital abstinence is avoided, IV fluids is there, proper dehydration and proper nutritious food is advised. Uh, if there is infection source is there, we have to treat it with the proper antibiotic course and we started on tocolytic drugs. These are the drugs which reduces the abdominal tightening contractions and it helps in prolonging the labor, prolonging the pregnancy so that the labor is avoided and prophylactically we give her corticosteroids that is the injections which we give her to improve the uh, fetal lung maturities because if the patient may suddenly develop into an advanced preterm labor it might avoid the breathing difficulties which may arise later. With these all factors, if we can prolong the pregnancy till up to 34 weeks, that would be well and good. But in, in spite of all these preventive factors we have taken, management factors we have given, and if the patient lands up into, an, into a labor, then that is called an advanced preterm labor, where depending on the condition of the patient and the condition of the fetus, delivery can be done either a normal delivery or a cesarean section. Even though mode of delivery is not important, but if there is the main issue is that we have to deliver the patient in a higher center where a neonatal care is available because premature deliveries are usually they are very low birth weight babies and even though they have an immediate cry after delivery later they may have develop a breathing difficulties might be developed they might have a sudden apnea 
because of the preterm they might need an oxygen support they might go on a cpap or an ventilatory support is required which is usually observed in a neonatal care unit is there and if the patient may suddenly develop a hypoglycemia might be there because they were because of the preterm they might develop feeding difficulties uh, breathing difficulties and early a neonatal sepsis can be seen patient in very rare cases may have intraventricular hemorrhage or necro necrotizing enterocolitis these are the very conditions usually we see in very premature babies so it is better always to get a patient delivered in a higher care center so that the baby can be taken care by the neonatologist immediately and taken further so that we can avoid further complications that might occur during the later childhood so whenever any high risk of, whenever the premature delivery is because of any high risk factors as there we have to treat them both consecutively both the mother and the fetus so now when we know what is the cause of the premature deliveries because of the increasing trend what are the preventive factors we are supposed to take so preventive factors whenever the patient pregnancy is confirmed we advise the patient to go as an early antenatal visit because some risk factors can be detected during the antenatal visits only in the first trimester we can detect whether there is any multiple pregnancies there and whether any thyroid disorders are detected so that we can treat them accordingly and patient should have a nice proper rest should be there and she should have a healthy and nutritious well balanced diet should be taken she is a worker because nowadays most working women are there so they have to take it according to their surroundings and the situations and they can take their help uh, from their colleague and most importantly it is required that they should have a frequent antenatal checkups and regular ultrasound scans and what are the medication has been advised by the doctor and if there are any risk factors detected so the uh, the test and the frequent scans and whether the medications has to be taken accordingly so that we can avoid the premature delivery so as we see nowadays because the premature delivery is more commonly we are seeing in an increasing trend by taking at least some basic precautions we can avoid the premature delivery and can have a healthy mother and a healthy baby thank you